Welcome to the Animals Around the Globe Expedition. Hey Alex, awesome that you're here. And good to be here. <laughs> yeah, good to speak to you today. So, like, can you maybe briefly introduce yourself and tell us about your background and expertise in studying the origins of dogs? Yeah, so yeah, I'm Alex for those watching and I studied uh, BSc Agricultural Sciences um, focusing on animal science at Stellenbosch University in South Africa. Um, yeah, I'm born and, raised, born and raised South African and I've just always really loved animals and I'm very interested in them. And that sort of led me to, yeah, having a look into the origin of dogs. Um, we live and we all have them or we've been around them and I think it's nice to maybe know where they've come from. Nice, yeah. And maybe then tell us, like, where do they come from? What is the theory behind this? Yeah, so it, obviously it gets quite complicated. There's been a lot of genomic studies sort of through archaeological findings. Um, but the general the general sort of trend all points back to Europe, um, as well as sort of the Eurasia and Middle East. Um, and sort of the main ancestor was originally thought to be the grey wolf. Um, the genetic sort of studies pointed to them, um, but it turns out that the actual ancestor, for, as sort of they've researched, is the late Pleistocene wolf, um, and that was about sort of dating back between ten and forty thousand years ago, uh, depending on which study we kind of focus on. But the grey wolf is not, in fact, the dog's ancestor, but their closest living relative. Um, oh wow. Yeah, so that, that's crazy. And do you have any idea how the first humans domesticated this wolf? Yeah, so looking into that um, can get quite interesting um, because obviously the original or its ancestor was a wolf, you know, as we see a large, quite wild animal, um, maybe perceived to be ferocious. And during, let's, let's go with the 40,000 years ago, just to, to make this run a bit more easily. <laughs> Um, it was during sort of the ice age, so maybe things were getting cold, perhaps there was less food available. And um, there are two theories as to how these, these wolves sort of became domesticated or more human orientated is during these cold times, they're obviously hungry. And as humans started to settle a bit more, perhaps sort of grouping and living together, they potentially left food out um, either as food waste or perhaps on hunting trips as they killed sort of wild animals for food they may have left some entrails or even just the smell of blood. And the thought is that these wolves started to pick up on this and this became easy food for them to scavenge on. Um, whilst they are able to attack and kill prey, it's obviously a lot easier to eat something that's kind of ready made for us. I think as humans, we can all agree with that. Um, and then it was kind of thought that either they scavenged and sort of followed these hunters or sort of hung around the maybe the village or group of where people were settled. And perhaps as these sort of wild animals hung around, people perhaps started feeding them a bit. And the more docile and friendlier ones started to tolerate the human presence um, to the point where humans started seeing the benefit of them. Perhaps they could protect them or assist them in their hunting endeavors, um, obviously being born hunters themselves. And the more and more these animals hung around, the more people perhaps interacted with them, started to try see that they could be a little bit friendly. And these are the ones that ended up carrying on breeding within the human groups and possibly led to the first proto-dog, which oh, is wow. kind of the interlinking name between the dog and sort of the wolf. Do you think that was the first like animal that ever was do domesticated? I do think so, yeah. It was, if wow. we look at sort of 40,000 years ago, um, yeah. domestication in general sort of means that it's an animal that is reliant on humans to a point. Yeah. So this would include, you know, nowadays cattle or horses or cats. Um, obviously, they all have their own sort of specific origin. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they became reliant on us and there was sort of a mutually beneficial relationship. Oh, wow. And I mean, like, definitely domesticating these, these wolves, like, influenced the, the history on, of humans, probably, and, and especially in terms of farming. Yeah, I think, I think uh, you know, something that I struggle to comprehend, obviously living in the modern world is yeah. safety from a wild animal, despite living in South Africa is, you know, they are in parks, so we're never maybe fearful that something's going to come and attack us. But, you know, having a large dog that perhaps barked at wild 
predators or stopped sort of these, you know, natural threats from coming into a village where there were children or sort of a group of people um, became quite beneficial, I would believe. Wow. Yeah, that's amazing, actually. Nice. Yeah. And um, then, like, yeah, w did you spot anything else interesting that you would like to add? Or otherwise, would, would you point to, like, the article that you're writing? Yeah, so I think um, what becomes quite interesting is it started, obviously, as a more wolf-like looking dog. Um, yeah. And without, I think now, in nowadays, we know a lot more about genetics, how we people might choose things in a dog. You might decide you want something more relaxed or perhaps you might still be someone who hunts and you then want a dog, maybe like a German short head pointer who has hunting characteristics. Or if you're a cattle farmer in Australia, you might choose a culpi or a herd, you know, a dog that is inclined to herd animals. Um, and these sort of things started getting decided around these perhaps 10, 15, 20,000 years ago, as these human settlers identified wolves that had things that they liked. Um, wow. Some wolves probably like to go hunting and maybe they they were they were better suited for their sort of human companions needs and i think that that sort of started this this thing called selective breeding um oh wow twenty thousand yeah. years ago already yeah well 10 10 15, 10, 15 000. <laughs> wow that's insane yeah, yeah it's a long time and yeah. it was only oh i say only it's actually still quite long ago but it was around the 19th century that there are formal dog breeders so where dogs were actually split into these categories. Um, and that's where you started seeing people maybe showcasing dogs and people started preferring certain looks or whilst a lot of it might still come down to behavior. Um, I think nowadays we're seeing a lot of people select based on looks as well. Yeah, for sure. That, that's insane. Yeah. And I mean, like starting 10,000 years ago, <laughs> like obviously we have a very big variety now of dogs, different yeah. kinds of dogs. That's uh, yeah. that's so crazy, actually. Yeah. Wow. I think I think yeah, gen genetics can be complicated, but I think it's really hard. I find it really hard to imagine that a pug or a chihuahua is a direct lineage to a wolf. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a long way. Yeah, it's a long way yeah. away. But uh, yeah, there's still something in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but amazing. Th thank you so much, Alex, for for this interview. Um, Pleasure. That, that was very interesting and insightful. Thank you. Yeah, of course. No problem. Hopefully the readers can, yeah, if they want to know a bit more, pop onto the article. Of course, yeah. So thank you. No problem.